Konnichiwa. So, I'm very happy to be back here in Osaka at the, I think, third edition of our motorbike tour. And it's amazing to see so many people. So, arigato gozaimasu for coming, so for showing up. I think this is the biggest event we had in so uh, Osaka. So, wishi. Um, and yeah, my name is Sebastian. I'm um, from Germany. I'm a freelancer working mostly in Java Enterprise with um, Java technology, with cloud native technology. And I'm mostly a Java consultant or a trainer for workshops. So I give workshops for companies. And I'm also a, a book author. So I last year I wrote <laughs> this book of architecting modern Java E applications, which is basically an introduction how you build Java E applications in a modern way. So how to do it in 2017 or now 2018 in terms of containers, in terms of cloud native technology. It will um, also show um, Kubernetes and all of these th uh, things that Edson um, introduced just right now. And besides that, I will do a lot of enterprise Java stuff, help standardizing um, what was Java EE in the past and will be Jakarta EE in the future. And speaking of which, I have stickers for you, for example, for Jakarta EE. If you want, they are brand new. The logo has just been announced. And we have a few more stickers. So we also have night hacking stickers, since this is live stream for the night hacking format. And we have Duke Onsen stickers for our on conference that we co-organize here in Japan. So you can get uh, uh, all of these stickers, but you have to do something. You have to ask questions. So only if you ask questions, you will get stickers. So I challenge you to ask a lot of questions. If you have questions, just raise your hand and you might get a sticker. So this is about service meshes. So basically, what our uh, talks were, the, f uh, the first previews, uh, previous talks about uh, containers, Docker containers, and then Edson talked about Kubernetes, about container orchestration. And now we put one more on top with service meshes and what service mesh technology is. And I will briefly show a few examples with Java Enterprise, because that's what it is about, how to integrate the service mesh technology, whatever that is, with modern Java EE applications. So what I will show for um, service meshes, this is, by the way, the Kubernetes uh, homepage, but Edson already thankfully covered that. What I will show is another technology that is called Istio. And that is the most used implementation for service, me uh, service meshes. And what service meshes are is you have your enterprise application or your enterprise system that is implemented or realized by microservices. And with all of these services, with all of these applications, all of these deployments, you need to add a few technical cross-cutting concerns. So it's not enough to just deploy something and then just happily run it in production. You have, for example, to add telemetry data, monitoring, tracing, stuff like that. You have to add resiliency. Right? If, you, if your service calls another service, you need to have timeout, um, things like resiliency patterns like bulkheads and so on and so forth. And you also want to add, have some more, what is here called intelligent routing. So some load balancing or a few, um, a few scenarios where you would deploy a newer service and then you would gradually um, route to the new one and so on and so forth. And now you can imagine if you had to add all of these concerns into your microservice deployments, that's a lot of work, right? Because you split up maybe a big enterprise system into small microservices and now each and every service needs to take all these concerns into account. So if you would use some technologies, there are different approaches to that. For example, the Spring Framework um, prides itself to include a lot of these concerns in the application itself. Right? So all of the applications then include, for example, monitoring, which you would then deploy, and they will take care of these concerns. Another approach is, and this goes more into the direction of service meshes, is that the environment adds all these concerns for you. Similar to aspects, as in aspect-oriented programming. So when you do, that is actually quite similar to the Java Enterprise programming model. When you write, let's say, a CDI managed bean, or 
EJB or any other um, any other bean or any other component in Java E, you write your code in Java, right? And then you put a few annotations on your Java classes. And just with these annotations, you control how your application container behaves, right? You just say, please make this um, Jaxo REST RESTful web service, RESTful endpoint. And then without implementing any HTTP low-level stuff yourself, your container takes care of that and will deploy it as such correspondingly. And now the idea is quite similar, that you say, well, I have these services and they should take a few more technical cross-cutting concerns into account. So what I do is I enhance my environment that is now not only in my uh, implementation a Kubernetes cluster, but a Kubernetes cluster that is enhanced for Istio. And now the whole environment takes care of it in a transparent way, similar to aspect-oriented programming. So as a result, I don't have to add these concerns into my application. My application can become, can stay relatively simple and my environment will add all, all of these concerns for me. So just to have a, f a quick live demo, a quick example. What I did, I wrote two Java Enterprise applications, very small ones. Why two? Because one is boring and one doesn't communicate a lot, so I have to have at least two of them which will be deployed to a cluster. And the first one will be an instrument shop, instrument craft shop that I called. So a shop where I can, you know, order musical instruments, such, a, such as a piano or a guitar. And then, because this is a quite uh, cheap instrument craft shop, I will have a MakerBot. Do you know MakerBots? Who has heard about MakerBots? Hands up. You should, if you attended one of Steve's sessions in the past. A MakerBot is a 3D printer. So this is a quite cheap instrument craft shop where it doesn't actually build your instrument, it just 3D prints them. So what we do, our first system will call the second system and, well, try to order some instruments with the MakerBot endpoint. So what we want to do is to have multiple services that call each other. So what you see here in purple is a pod. So that is a very basic scheme, how that deployment would look like in Kubernetes. Basically, you have a service for each application. You have a service for an instrument craft job, and you have a Kubernetes service for the second one for the MakerBot system. So two microservices, if you want. And now traditionally, or traditionally in, only, in a Kubernetes-only solution, you would have a pod. We already learned about pod, what that is, so that is one or more running containers. And your pod contains your actual Docker container, your application that is running there. So your instrument craft job application or your MakerBot application. That's it. On your first application, calls the second one, and then, well, returns the response. So for example, if we want to craft a new instrument, we go to the first system, the first system calls the second system synchronously, that response, that's it, via Docker containers and the network over the Kubernetes cluster. So now what's new in Istio, how that works is, because we need to somehow inject these technical concerns that I just talked about, right? So we somehow want to realize, let's say, monitoring or logging or a tracing solution or authentication, routing, a few more things. So we somehow have to get into that, inject some more code, some more functionality in that behavior. So what happens once you deploy to an Istio cluster, without your knowledge or without actually seeing it, you have two containers instead of one. So now you have a service for an instrument craft shop that still contains a pod, one or more pods. And now each and every pod has two Docker containers. One in purple, that's still your main container, your actual running application. And now in green, a second one, which is a proxy. And that proxy is not added by us, that is actually added in a transparent way by the Istio cluster, by the Istio technology. And what happens is that without the knowledge of the application, each and every connection goes through that proxy that then can add all of these concerns that we are interested in. So basically, if you now make a call into the instrument craft shop, that actually goes to the proxy first, and now the proxy via localhost connects to the main container, that is our application, 
And now if, as part of, um, of the business process, our application wants to call the second system, the MakerBot, it also will do so over the proxy. And now implicitly, the proxy will talk to the other proxy of the second service. So basically, this is how you build up that mesh of services by communicating over these proxies with our main containers. And same story here. If the proxy then of our MakerBot system calls the main container, now at some point the response goes back over the proxies and back to our client. And this is now how we can inject these technical cross-cutting concerns because, because the proxy will take care of that. It will add monitoring, it will add routing, and all of these other concerns. So for example, if you would add monitoring, well, then the proxy locks everything that happens in your connections and emits these statistics. Or if you would want to do um, some more sophisticated routing, what you would do is build up multiple services of your backends, and now the proxy can decide within the service mesh where to go based on some circumstances, for example. So now you can hook up into that system and provide some further complex scenarios. So this is basically how that looks like. And since we do not have too much time today, I just briefly want to uh, go into that. The um, code is all available on GitHub. So what I have is two enterprise applications that run on Java EE, that run Java EE 8. And these will be well, deployed to a Kubernetes and Istio solution. So what we do is, and this I already prepared that, is that we add, this is the first system. So here you can see the Maven uh, build file. Sorry, Andres, I build it using Maven and not Gradle. But it's a very simple project. It actually doesn't matter that much. So you build that project, that application as a WAR file. And then what you do, and this is if you are familiar with Docker, then you might have seen that. This is a Docker file that is based on based on a Docker base image where I use uh, a Java E8 server. And what I then do, well, I add some configuration and I add my application to the deployment and that's it, done. And now I have a Docker image that contains my application and everything that my application needs in order to run. So an application container, Java installation, the operating system binaries, and so on and so forth. And if we do it really properly, then what we just heard in the first talk, we also include some JVM arguments for the correct heap size and so on and so forth, right? And now that needs to be deployed on a Kubernetes cluster. So what we do, and this is quite similar to Dockerfile, is we need to add some deployment descriptors for the Kubernetes environment. So this is now more or less the implementation of what Edson talked about. This is a Kubernetes service definition for our instrument craft shop and a deployment. And these two definitions are created manually here. So what that is, is it deploys a service, which is our logical abstraction over our instrument craft shop application, what you saw in the diagram. And then we want to have a deployment that basically manages our pods. So that deployment will implicitly create, in this case, one replica of our ap uh, application, one pod here. And then what we want to do is that because you all only see one container here, which is the main container that runs our Docker image, what we want to do is that we want to inject the second proxy container from, um, from Istio, from the service mesh, into this deployment. And this will be done by our cluster. So what I have here is also a cluster, but running Istio on a local um, laptop also works. So Edson showed his example on a local installation. This works also with Istio. You ha can have a locally running Kubernetes cluster. But if you include Istio and then a few other things, such as a monitoring solution and tracing and so on and so forth, at some point, even the biggest laptop will not be sufficient. So what I use, I use the cloud. And I use a solution that has just been announced, which, uh, which is the Oracle Cloud for managed Kubernetes option. So you can have um, a Kubernetes um, cluster, basically. And since Kubernetes is quite cumbersome to set up yourself, you may want to have a managed option, which is available with the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So that is just briefly how that looks like. You can create a cluster. And this is my account. I created a cluster with, I think, six nodes in total. So I have six nodes in my Kubernetes cluster. 
and I already enhanced, well, Istio for that. So I did the Istio deployment. Basically how that looks like is I have a cluster which we can access, cube control, get parts, give me the running parts, which is now nothing running, it's still empty. So now we want to do this deployment for the instrument craft job. Yeah, sorry, the Wi-Fi is not the fastest here. That means we want to, well, send all of these definitions to the cluster that I just showed you. And how that looks like is here a little bit um, complicated to syntax. So the second command, we basically put two commands together. The second command, um, which can be simplified in, um, in the future, injects all of the Istio components into our deployment. So that makes sure that the second proxy container actually is there without us touching and modifying the deployment because that, because that is quite cumbersome to write. So what we do, we include the, um, the deployment for the instrument craft job and then we apply it against the cluster and what happens then is, well, that hopefully our deployment, our service uh, will be created and also what is called an ingress. Ingress is a Kubernetes resource to access our cluster from the outside because we're running here in the internet, we have to access that. And what's now even more interesting is how these parts are created. Because usually if you see these parts, then you see a name and the containers in their status, whether they're ready or not. And now here you can see there are actually two containers, not only one. Although our Kubernetes definition only included one. So that now comes from Istio and it will tell us once that is up and running that we can do this deployment in that way. So let me briefly do the same thing for the MakerBot system. Basically looks um, the same with also a definition, sorry, wrong command, a definition for a deployment, a service, and an ingress. Deployment for MakerBot YAML. And then I can quickly show you this example. So the interesting story for us developers is that if we now want to add these technical concerns such as monitoring or tracing, that already ships with Istio. So let me just quickly check the connection with the Wi-Fi here. Yeah, that crashed, that as well, that as well. I want to connect against my cluster because what I can do then is if I, oh, didn't it work? Need to, I need to quickly set up a proxy connection to my cluster, which is here. Wi-Fi, please do your job, yes. Well, I can have, this is a Grafana monitoring board. Grafana is one technology to add monitoring. It has nice looking graphs. And the nice story about that is I didn't have to configure it. It ships with Istio in its standard is installation and it has a dashboard with it that includes me, includes uh, for me all of the information for my services, how many operations I have per second and so on and so forth. And now you see all these graphs which are right now empty. Now if I would actually do some requests, you see the requests coming in into your money so monitoring solution out of the box without implementing that or integrating that into our applications ourselves. So let's see if that is up and running. And then what we can do is that we can actually, that it should be still the same address. So what we do, we call our application via HTTP. So I will use curl from the command line. And what that is, that is the IP of my Oracle Cloud cluster. And I will basically create a new instrument via JSON by posting a new HTTP request there. Oops, now it went, it went away. Where is my, where's my request? And then, if everything works, it says, it's not there yet. Okay, maybe now, try again. Now it's there, 204 no content, which is basically a yes, it worked. Can do this again, post another instrument. And now what happens, you see, now there are changes, now there are actually incoming requests, and it uh, tells me the response time of each and every service, so we have the different services here, and we have our monitoring solution, which is well, the interesting thing for, dev uh, for DevOps. In the same way, we can add Zipkin, which is a tracing solution, 
And guess what? This also comes with our Istio cluster. And it will show us the traces of the individual requests that come into our uh, microservice. So for example, if you have a lot of running instances, then you might want to know which actual instance handled the request. And what you can do here it is a little bit uh, barely visible. You see that there is now um, a trace coming in, one request that spans two application. First it, uh, applications. First it went to the instrument craft shop, then after a while it went to the MakerBot and synchronously back. And if you have a lot of more complex calls, you can trace here where they actually went through. Another interesting thing that also ships with it, which is more like to get an overview, is the service graph that shows you which applications and which services talk to each other. So here you see that, for example, the Istio ingress talks to the graph shop and that goes to the MakerBot and so on and so forth. Here it's quite simple, but once you have a more complex setup, this can be helper, helpful to get the overview. And all of that comes with that um, Istio solution. And this is one reason why I would say it's a very nice solution to integrate with your um, Java Enterprise application. So here are a few key takeaways, and since we don't have that much time, just one question. Who likes to read of you? Hands up. Who likes to read books? Read books? No? So it's not that interesting? Because I have another present besides stickers, which is, well, um, a discount coupon for my book. So, you know, maybe we're on a motorcycle tour, right? In a motorcycle, you have limited luggage. So I, I would like to print some real books, some printed books, but with a motorcycle, it's a little bit hard to, you know, fill them up with limited luggage. So I have a discount code for you. If you go to, I, well, negotiated with my publisher on packpub.com for specifically for this Japan tour, so please don't tell anybody. If you use this discount code until um, end of June, you can get a discount on that book. If you're interested in books at all, and if you're interested in Java Enterprise technology, maybe how to implement it in a modern way, you could go there and check that out. Tell, tell the people on the stream to keep it to themselves. Please. Oh yeah, on the stream, please don't. Only if you're in Japan, you're not allowed to. <laughs> okay, I will uh, show this again in a second. Then, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for your attention.